Now, let's go to the last question, which is question D. The radii of curvature of the spherical surfaces of a biconvex lens are 15 cm and 17 cm respectively, and its refractive index is 1.5. So, this is a biconvex lens. We know that for thin lens, the lens is a piece or part of two sphere. And as you can see here, I've drawn the spear separately, which is, you can see one on the right side and another one on the left side. This is why we have two radii of curvature for this spherical surface, which is one is 15 cm and the other is 17 cm. So on the spear on the left side here, we have a radius of 17 cm. Well, on the right side, we have the radii of curvature of 15 cm. As you can see here, not only the sphere have their own radius, but they also have their focal length and center of curvature, which is C and F. Now let's go through the first question. The first question asks us to find the focal length in air. So before we go through the next step, let's list down on information, which is we have the two radius, which is 15 centimeter, sorry, centimeter and 17 centimeter. And we have the refractive index for the lens, which is 1.5. Since it asks us to find the focal length in air, we're going to use the lens maker equation to find the focal length. Lens maker equation is 1 over F equal to in bracket N material, which is the refractive index of the material, refractive index of the medium and medium, minus 1 in bracket 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. So let me explain one by one the meaning of the equation. So the end material here refers to the refractive index of the lens. Well, the end medium refers to the refractive index outside of the lens. What about the R1 and R2? How do we determine which is R1 and which is R2? This depends on the incident ray. So let's say we have an object over here. This is our object. So if we place the object over there, the incident ray will be coming from this side of the Sphere. The first surface the incident ray will encounter will become radius 1. So for this one, the first surface that the incident ray encounters is the sphere with on the right hand side, which is the green sphere. So radius 1 here is the 15.0 centimeter. And radius 2 would be the 17.0 centimeter. So this should be the, the first of us should be the green sphere, so it's there. So now we have determined our R1 and R2. Let's determine the sign convention for the Rs. So for the sign convention, again, we're going to use the table previously, which is this one. So for our R, let's see. For so for our first R, which is this one, and our second R is this one. First R, 
Let's see whether it's positive or negative. So after the incident ray goes through or encounter the first sphere, and this should be the middle part of the lens, and then there will be a refracted ray afterwards. So let me use a different color for the refracted ray. Right. We know that for the R to be positive or negative, it depends on whether it's the same on or on the opposite side of the refracted ray. So for the R1, we can see that it is in the same side as the refracted ray, so it should be positive. And R2, since it is on the opposite side of the refracted ray, it should be negative. Now that we have determined our sign convention, we can continue to plug in our numbers. So again, the end material is the refractive index of the lens, which is 1.5. Our end medium here is air. So we know that air, refractive index of air is 1.0. Minus 1 over here. 1, sorry, R1 here is positive 15.0 centimeter. Minus R2, which is negative 17.0 centimeter. We rearrange for F and we'll get positive 15.9 centimeter. Now that we have our focal length, we can redraw the previous diagram, which is this one, into the right focal length that we achieve. Now that we have our focal length, which is 15.9 cm, we can redraw the focal length from our previous diagram, which is that one. I've drawn one out here. So let me change the position of this diagram first so over here right so this is when the lens is in air so the focal length we have here so let me label this center of curvature this is the center of curvature for radius 2 and this is this well the right side is the center of curvature of radius one. So the focal length we have um, calculated here is 15.9. If we compare it to the radius in the sphere, the right sphere, the green one, we find that the focal length is more than the center of curvature. So we should remove or we should move our focal length to another position which is Somewhere after 15.0. Somewhere over here, maybe. So, let me mark it down that the focal length for the green sphere, so the focal length on the green sphere is, here is more than the center of curvature of this sphere. Well, for the left sphere, which is the yellow sphere, since this sphere has a radius of 17.0, so it's not more, the focal length here is not more than the center of curvature, but we should move it as well because it's nearer the center of curvature, somewhere around there. So the, as you can see here, the focal length is not uh, the middle between the circle and the center of curvature so the focal length here is not half the radius and right, note it down that the focal length here is less than the center of curvature for this second so for the sphere on the left over here so now let's look at the second question where we also will get uh, a focal length that might be more than our 
um, center of curvature. So the second question, it asks us to find the focal length in water and the refractive index is given as 1.33. So we're going to use the same equation. Just note down the refractive index in water is equal to 1.33. Now we want to find our focal length. Again, the same thing, our Uh, refractive index of our lens, which is 1.5, over re refractive index of water, before this is was air. And the center of curvature for our sphere is still the same, 15.0 minus 1 over, in bracket 17.0. And we will get the answer of positive. I'm sorry, and then and then we can rearrange to get F and get the answer for positive 62.3 centimeter. And again, as you can see here, it is more, way, way more than the center of curvature of both sphere. So again, I've drawn one here. Let's move this one. So this can let me label this is center of curvature for radius 2. And this the right one, center of curvature for radius 1. Now the focal length here is way, way more than the um, center of curvature of woods rows spheres, so it's somewhere outside of the sphere. So, all right, that is the last question. Now you can answer the rest of the question yourself. And good luck, everyone.